And suddenly it's finale time. This is where we hear one more number from each of our guests on today's show. And first, the small faces who say... <laughs> This one's about the small faces, the curse of the small faces. Um, just to say, before we go any further, yes, I am wearing my false beard. I'm going to go out and do a bit of spying later, getting ready for Christmas, etc. No, it's just that I'm maybe thinking about growing my beard back. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about my beard and about the small faces. So let's get on with the curse of the small faces. Right. Let's do a bit of background. Back in the early 1960s, there was a group of acts who were very big in Britain. There was the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, the Who, the Kinks, and the Small Faces. Five acts, and the Small Faces had, in their short lifetime, because they broke up in 1968, they had 14 top 10 hits, they had seven albums in the charts, they had all kinds of things, they were big. But they are the only one of the five who didn't make it big in the United States. Part of that is because Ian McLagan, I think it was, had a bit of a criminal record, a very minor thing, but that meant they couldn't get visas to go to the States. And so that was part of it. Other reasons were maybe they were a bit too British. And to be honest with you, even though they were like the king of the mods and they were like, you know, the iconic British mod band and they're very good at songwriting, you know, Steve at Marriott, um, Ronnie Lane wrote fantastic songs, but maybe it's a bit too British for the Americans, who at the time, their idea of Britishness and was um, Dick Van Dyke and Mary Poppins, maybe. All right, ladies and gents, comical poem, suitable for the occasion, extemporised and thought up before your very eyes. Fortunately, they had a good manager when they started, they had a guy, and then they were taken over by a guy called Don Arden the father of Sharon Osborne, who was a music business. He was known as a bit of a gangster. If that's not libelous, so he's dead, so it's not really libelous. Really. But it is true, there's stories of him dangling Steve Marriott at the window, Tilly agreed to sign contracts. And the Small Faces were never really a happy band, apparently. They were always in a conflict. Um, the rest of the band thought that Steve Marriott was a bit of a prima donna. All these sort of things apparently surfaced afterwards and stuff. And Don Arden, their manager, apparently paid them £20 a week, plus gave them a clothing allowance. Now, bear in mind that they had 14 top 10 hits. They had all these albums that they were earning a fortune doing live shows, that's not a lot. And um, the band took Don Arden to court, it went on for years, and by the time it was um, settled, he lost the case and then vanished the next day or so, something like that. But also as well, two of the members of the band were by this time, they died, curse of the small faces. I basically knew Steve at Marriott, and if you watch my video about how he got me fired, and there's a link down in the description to watch that if you want to watch that, I think you should. People call it the most rambling and pointless video of all time. Well, there you go. Is it? Let me know. Watch it. Comment. I don't think it's that bad, but there again, I don't think any of these are that bad. I think they're fantastic. Aren't they the best videos you've ever watched? I mean, the BBC, ITV, Channel 4, whatever, NBC. They don't make stuff like this. Why not? What is wrong with them? Right, so, Ronnie Lane, I came across a bit, I passed across a little bit, but apart from that, I hardly knew Ian Claggan or Kenny Jones, who were the other two members. In the 1970s, I used to drink in a pub in Soho called the Blue Posts in Berwick Street, and one of the regulars was a guy called Brian, who used to sell fruit and veg in the... Um, in the market, his family had been there for a hundred years, whatever, and I found out that he was the bass player in Ronnie Lane's Slim Chance. But apart from that, and apart from the fact that um, Rod Stewart, who later joined the band with Ronnie Wood, I my past I was partners with somebody who used to work with him back in the 60s. But apart from that, my paths and the small faces didn't cross. And to be perfectly honest, I think I've mentioned this in my other videos. Never a huge fan of Steve Marriott at the time, though in retrospect I can say that he was a fantastic songwriter, as was Ronnie Lane. 
they kept having falling out apparently, this is what I hear, they kept having fallings out and then in 1968 the record company released an album track, Lazy Sunday Afternoon, which the band had recorded, it was a Steve Marriott song and he wrote it, he's a very music holy type of song and it was always intended to be an album track because back in those days when a band put a single out it was like this is what we are and in those days that was how people listened to the radio and they heard the new single by however the Small Faces or the Beatles or the Stones and that is what the band want you to hear this is what the band are saying this is what we are this is what we um, sound like but they weren't pleased with it and they were collecting more rows with the manager and with themselves and then on New Year's Eve 1968 the band were playing at Alexandra Palace and Steve Marriott famously stormed off stage and said I quit I quit when Steve left the Small Faces, he went off to work with Peter Frampton in Humble Pie, which was always intended to be, I am told, and Steve Marriott actually told me this, this was the whole point of it was, it was Peter Frampton, who was the guitarist with the herd, it was intended to make him a star. So Steve liked the idea that he was got, not going to be at the front of the band because he got really self-conscious in the small faces, got stage Friday and things like that. So with Humble Pie, he could be at the back of the stage playing his guitar and Peter Frampton would be at the front. And that would be it. It would be Peter Frampton's band and Steve Marriott wouldn't have to take all the weight of the band on his shoulders, which he thought that's what he was doing in the small faces. And that was the small faces breaking up, although they never actually broke up because they did a few, tried a few things. They got in Ronnie Wood and Art Wood, who was Ronnie Wood's brother, who in my opinion was the more talented one. He was in a band called the Art Woods, which is a fantastic band with some great stuff if you get a chance to hear it. Art went away and did something else, and, and Ronnie Wood brought in Rod Stewart, and the rest of the band apparently didn't want Rod Stewart in the band but they realised they needed a um, front man, he was a great singer and he worked well with them. Because Ronnie Wood and um, Rod Stewart were quite tall, five foot ten sort of tall, and so they were not really small because the others were like five feet, five feet two sort of thing. So th they dropped the name Small Faces, though interestingly enough, because of contractual problems in the States, even with the tall men, Ronnie Wood and Rod Stewart in the band, they were still called the Small Faces well into the 1970s. And basically that was the end of these um, Small Faces. They did reform with Steve Marriott and the rest of the original members for a couple of years in the 1970s, but that was coincided with punk and people weren't really that interested in they did two albums that no one was particularly paid much attention to. And Steve Marriott, as we know, ended up playing in pubs. He could win that. How come you didn't know that was on that cassette? And they didn't tell me. They don't keep you informed. <laughs> of course That's not. Really That'd be the worst thing they could do. They'd have to pay me then, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> and then I think now there's only one member of the band left. All the rest have died, unfortunately, very sadly, in various ways. Steve Wright died in the fire. Um, Ronnie Lane died of multiple sclerosis. And then, so it's all very sad. As I speak in 2022, April 2022, there's only one member of the band left, and all the rest are gone. The curse of the small faces. So, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this, please like it. S subscribe! Why don't you subscribe? I want you to subscribe. It would be very good if you join me on all my journeys. It's mainly stuff like this. I also do walks around the place. I'm doing a, I'm doing a bit of a more adventurous kind of um, walking stuff. A bit more going on the road, a bit of travelling. So, if you enjoy what, what, hearing me ramble on like this, then please subscribe, please press the notification bell and comment down below. Tell me how awful they are or how good. I really like to hear from you. Don't be too cruel. Like it, subscribe, etc. And hope to see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.